Okay, your microphone is on. Thank you, Mayor. Administration does not have any additions or deletions to the agenda this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Would you please put the agenda on the screen on the motion to adopt the agenda? Member Council willing to move the motion to adopt the agenda as circulated. Councilor Penrod, I'll call upon you to make that motion. I'm, I'm the adoption guy. I move that the September 17th, 2024 Committee of the Whole Meeting agenda be adopted as presented. Thank you, Councillor. Discussion on the motion? I just need to get my voting machine up here. No discussion, would you please um, begin the voting process? I carry unanimously in favor of the motion. Thank you, Council. Next, our adoption of the minutes from the Committee of the Whole of July 16, 2024. Is there a mention, member of council willing to move the motion to adopt the minutes of the previous Committee of the Whole? I'll wait for the motion to come on the screen. I'll move that the July 16, 2024 Committee of the Whole meeting minutes be adopted as presented. Discussion on the motion? Members of Council, seeing none, Council, would you please vote once the voting process has begun? Thank you, Council. That also carries unanimously. Seven nil in favor of the motion. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, no open forum guests this evening is my understanding. Is that correct? I'm just going to get your mic on here. I got it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we do not have any open forum registrations this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 5.1, Comprehensive Growth Plan Framework. I believe Ms. Raymond and Ms. Squires are presenting this evening. Ms. O'Neill. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, it's me tonight. So good afternoon, Committee of the Whole. Today's presentation will... Oh, let me just sort my mic out here. Sorry. Today's presentation will introduce a growth framework project and associated work items to committee members. The intent of the presentation is to outline the project's scope, anticipated outcomes, and its significance for council as well as the broader community. The comprehensive growth plan has brought together planning and development, infrastructure, finance, economic development, and will include others along the way, including city council, to help Beaumont effectively plan for growth. To lead the project for the city and to help answer questions tonight, we have Kendra Raymond, the city's director of planning and development, and Cassandra Squires, the city's manager of strategic initiatives. Thank you, Ms. O'Neill. Oh, it's, it's still me. <laughs> still me, still going. <laughs> Sorry, okay. <laughs> still going. Why don't you just keep running and rolling there, okay? I, I'll, I'll get out of the way. I'll just, I'll go have a coffee. I'll I, get I out of the way. I have about 10 more minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay. You see, Ms. Raymond, I thought, okay, what does it mean? Nope. I say Ms. Raymond, so. No. All right, Ms. O'Neill, please continue. I won't interrupt you anymore, I promise. So, um, the development of the Comprehensive Growth Plan, and I'll refer to it as the CGP going forward, meets two actions identified in Council's strategic plan. First, to, de to incorporate demographic forecasts, growth patterns, and relevant strategies and directional plans into a comprehensive 20 plus year master strategy to anticipate and plan for future community needs. And two, to develop a forward-looking policy for public facility and land planning that includes guidelines for joint use facilities, the long-term reuse and repurposing of older facilities, and a land management and land bank strategy. <clears throat> Beaumont's exceptional growth is expected to continue for decades. And while this enhances our vibrancy, supports our local economy, and is beautiful to see people choose the city to live, play, and raise a family, it also strains operational services and municipal finances. Am I okay to continue? I was going to say thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's <laughs> Therefore, we need a robust growth management plan. Understand, understanding the operational and financial ramifications of growth is essential for effective future planning and demonstrates our commitment to prudent financial stewardship and sustainability. With Council's approval, administration has recently completed several initiatives that support long-term growth planning, including the 10-year capital plan, the protective services review, the utilities and stormwater management master plan, 
significant community engagement through the A Place to Grow project and the Community Health Needs Assessment. In addition to the other statutory and non-statutory plans, these are all inputs into the Comprehensive Growth Plan, an overarching strategy that integrates all. This plan is a proactive response to the challenges and opportunities posed by the current and projected population growth. By, by acting now, we can effectively manage growth-related impacts on infrastructure, public services, and quality of life, while also leveraging economic opportunities and preserving neighborhood character. Administration believes this approach will lay the groundwork for long-term prosperity and well-being. As we were trying to figure out how to solve this uh, complex problem and how to approach it, we looked at examples from municipalities across North America. While we found that there have been several studies and plans completed to help manage growth, including many financial sustainability plans, we have yet to find examples that bring all these inputs together, especially for municipalities with a very small commercial tax base. Council's endorsement of this plan and involvement in the deliverables that, this will, that will bring this plan to reality will ensure administration has a clear guiding strategy moving forward. This plan will enable transparent discussions and decision making to occur long term as the city expands. Growth planning at the municipal level involves strategic efforts to manage and guide the expansion and development of urban areas. Part of this work is to examine past growth trends and patterns to help understand the dynamics of growth and development and infrastructure impacts. The Comprehensive Growth Plan brings those priorities into an integrated strategy for a complete view of Beaumont's growth over the next 20 years. If there's one thing to remember from tonight is that fundamentally, this plan answers three questions. How do we grow? What do we need as we grow? And how do we pay for that? Just last year, the city grew by another 4.6% to over 23,000 residents. That's 29% growth in the last seven years. And the expected developments in Beaumont forecast the city's population to more than double by 2044. We are also seeing our demographics change. While we have many young families in our community, we are also seeing a population that is aging in place or multi-generational families. These are demographics that may need different services. This growth doesn't take in con into consideration the growth we are seeing from our neighbors as well. Edmonton and Leduc County continue to plan for rapid population increases. For example, East Vistas on the west boundary is expected to have a population of 25,000 by 2040. To put this into perspective, this is estimated to be over 73,000 people within a tight radius within the next 15 to 20 years. Of course, adjacent municipalities will also have their own services. Therefore, collaborative intermunicipal planning is essential. The city also collaborates with the development community and property owners to forecast development stages that also take into account what happens outside the city's borders. Unchecked growth often places undue financial burdens on current taxpayers as they fund assets future residents will benefit from. To ensure better intergenerational equity, forecasting needs and utilizing available resources effectively is paramount. Undertaking an overarching plan of this magnitude addresses several challenges we face as the third fastest growing city in Alberta and the fastest growing city in the Edmonton metro region. This exponential growth strains services and finances and will persist for decades. But we're not alone. This is a story being felt by cities and mid-sized municipalities across the country. Beaumont's over-reliance on residential tax revenue further exacerbates the challenges we are facing, as does the decreased funding to municipalities from the provincial government to support their growing infrastructure needs. And perhaps more importantly, there are challenges to undertaking long-term multi-year budgeting without responsible growth policies that define how and how fast we grow and without defining the services we want to provide as a demographics change. This project will lead to far better outcomes for Beaumont residents. It will improve administration's and council's plans for growth and future infrastructure needs. It will provide comprehensive and transparent capital planning based on service classifications. It will equally distribute the cost of growth. It will improve our financial modeling and forecasting for better decision making in the long term. It will better inform negotiations with developers on municipal needs. And it will provide a framework for decision making, reduce uncertainties, and enable goals and objectives to be met by introducing expanded policies related to growth. 
sorry for the small font on this one. The CGP will bring the tactical nature of the financial plans, asset management, statutory and non-statutory plans, and annual work plans and the four-year corporate business plan together into a long-range view of our community. This strategy puts action to the visions identified in the municipal development plan and in council's strategic plan. So how are we gonna get this done? The discovery phase, phase one, includes developing an inventory of information from various departments. This would include an inventory of developer contributed assets and timelines for these assets to transfer to municipal management. An inventory of actions from statutory and non-statutory plans. The results from the A Place to Grow project. Data on current service levels and long-term operational impacts from developer contributed assets and more. Administration will, look, um, will also look to develop a decision-making rubric for capital projects to assist with right-sizing public infrastructure and amenities, as well as a service classification system to help prioritize projects and initiatives. Administration is currently uh, undertaking the work in this phase. Phase two is a development phase and will include several policy and program-related initiatives to inform the project. In this phase, Council will see responsible growth policies that aim to balance the needs of development with considerations for sustainability, equity, and quality of life for residents. We expect this work to be completed by Q1, Q2 of 2025. Administration will also bring forward expanded service levels to include recreation, protect protective services, library services, schools, and more. This will allow for better projections of needs as the population increases. For example, if there were to be a service level stating that Beaumont requires a library facility with X square footage and a collection of X number of items for every 20,000 residents, then based on population projections, the city will know when this project will need to come into play, where it will be placed, and how we will budget for it over time. We will also look at improved development agreements with developers, requiring more mandatory amenities to support the city's needs. Think trails rinks, spray parks, that kind of thing. The city's offsite levies help solve an important sustainability piece of the puzzle and our bank policy will be an important part of this development phase. This policy will guide the use, acquisition and disposition of city land. It will also provide guidance on how municipal reserve land is used and acquired to help guide decisions and meet the needs of current residents without compromising the needs of future ones. So think future school sites, for example. This policy may also consider whether the municipality invests into the development of area structure plans on lands within the city to help drive commercial inv investment. And the policy will look at how to ensure an adequate supply of lands available for commercial development. This brings me to the third phase of the project, the financial analysis. Once the development phase is done and we have a complete picture of the data and needs for the community, this information will be incorporated into financial modeling, including the updated offsite levies, expanded indicator research, and more. This financial analysis will be the start of multi-year financial plans with a more accurate representation of the community needs over time. What we do today impacts what we can do tomorrow. Previously, without this aggregated data and long-term projections, it has been difficult to predict what will be needed. However, expanded service levels, improved development agreements, and more will provide administration with the information they need to plan longer term and find solutions to the growing financial needs. We are estimating to complete this project by the end of Q1 2026. And finally, phase four is really about ensuring the integration of the CGP into the corporate cycle. And with that, we will be taking a look into how the city undertakes other master plan work to ensure that those master plans are developed with clear actions, timelines, and costs that can then be easily added into the CGP for Council's consideration. We expect the CGP will be renewed and revisited every four years following the timeline of Council's strategic plan and updated annually with the annual budget process and corporate business planning activities. There are several inputs into the comprehensive growth plan that will require Council's feedback and or approval along the way. Those items will be brought forward individually as we work through this project plan. Administration is excited at the prospect of this important project and hope that we can be a municipal leader in, uh, in, municipal, in municipal planning once this work is completed. With that, we look forward to your questions. I do think that questions related to developers and offsite levies may be better answered during the next item on Council's agenda, though. Thank you.
Angus O'Neill. Appreciate that. My presentation. Seeing no questions, then, oh, what's going to all of a sudden here? Perfect. Hang on a second. Councilman Newkirk, I'm trying to get your microphone going for you here. You have the floor, Steve. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um, I guess what I'm hopeful for is the elevator speech on why this matters to residents. And the reason I say that is because, you know, Beaumont is the third fastest growing municipality. You know, there's some important bullet points in here around, um, you know, what it takes to grow and some of the challenges and stuff and, you know, why why do residents need to know what we're planning here? What's, what, what's our message to residents with all this? Ms. O'Neill. Thank you for the question. I, I think the message is that right now we have several plans that we bring forward to council through the budget process. The CGP would allow us to plan for growth with one plan. This plan will develop policies that we currently don't have with respect to service levels. For example, the protective services report that council would have recently seen. How can council set policies so some items are automatic as we plan for this growth? Yeah, it's the opportunity to bring together a bunch of pieces into one place, right? So, you know, as we enter into budget and we have, like you say, we have a, 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 a a report in our hands that we reviewed months ago that required thought and input into budget and you know we we see all those pieces coming together uh, that's kind of what I brought from it is everything in one place so yeah thank you thank you councillor next to speak will be councillor McCook, McCook please Kat you have the floor Thank you, and thank you very much. Um, I definitely like that it can be renewed in conjunction with council strategic plan as well. I think that will follow nicely. Um, one of my questions was, how does it kind of fit in with some of the other plans? And I just want to ensure that we're not putting too many plans together, but I guess this kind of wraps them all together. Um, I just have a few questions. So what specific measures are we going to put in place to ensure that the comprehensive growth plan will balance kind of the sustainable growth piece while also maintaining our city's character and everything like that, especially as we're looking to drive commercial tax base as well. Exactly. Um, through the chair to Councillor McCook, um, great question. And that's what we're hoping the comprehensive growth plan will solve. We currently don't have any growth related policies. Um, it will be very important to ensure that we have an adequate supply of land for commercial uh, tax base. So taking that broader and longer term look on the next 20 years to ensure that the development staging is appropriate will be a key input into that policy, I believe. I don't know if Ms. Raymond wants to add anything. No. Okay, thank you. Because I think that's definitely, especially as we talk about growth, that's something that consistently comes up with residents is, you know, and, and I know we talk about that as an overarching feel of, from a community perspective. It's people love the community aspect, but they also like, you know, how Beaumont looks and feels. So um, I think it's important that we ensure that we kind of keep that. Um, can you also elaborate, and maybe this is something that will come with um, the completion of it, but our strategy for kind of securing additional funding through government grants and how the CGP will improve our chances in these applications. Thank you for that question. What we're seeing right now when we apply for grants is there's um, more due diligence on the, on the part of the uh, grant providers where they really need to see all the financial aspects, uh, detailed designs, how this fits into the, municipal, into the uh, municipality's future plans. So we're seeing more requirements when we apply for grants. Having the CGP ready and a clear plan of what we're going to do and hopefully how we're going to work with our neighboring municipalities will assist us as we apply for grants. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And I presume some of the data and stuff that will feed into this will help with that as well. Yes. Okay. Um, just a couple more questions, Mayor? Please continue. Okay. Um, so how will this CGP, if at all, 
um, incorporate any feedback from the community and from focus groups like we've done in the past, like a place to grow and what kind of additional engagement is planned as the plan kind of progresses? Thank you for that question. Um, Engagement will still be part of all the master plans that will be renewed um, on whatever their cycle is, and those feed the comprehensive growth plan. From the comprehensive growth plan, the, the idea is that we can then develop a multi-year budget which council would approve, and the budget goes through its own round of engagement. Finally, significant public engagement like the A Place to Grow project is a key input as we determine, like, as we work on phase one of this project to get us started. Okay, thank you. Um, and then my last question, I guess, is, um, so given that our projected completion is 2026, um, will the CGP kind of be flexible enough to adapt to any unforeseen economic um, situations or population changes? And how are we gonna kind of adapt that. Yes, exactly, that's the plan. So the CGP is meant to be very flexible with multiple financial um, levers. So if grants decrease, then council would have to decide, okay, we have less money, do we pull another lever? That could be a tax increase of whatever council decides or move shift projects. But it, the CGP is really intended to provide a one-stop shop for council to understand uh, impacts financially what projects can move, how do we re reprioritize based on some sort of a rubric. Okay, thank you. So it, it essentially will help us definitely have more a more clear vision as to what we can do and hopefully be more adaptable to changing circumstances exactly. based on the data and everything put together. Okay, thank you very much. I look forward to uh, having this completed. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Appreciate that. And with that, my next speaker will be Councillor Penrod. Councillor, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Danilik. Um, appreciate the report. A uh, couple things that I just wanted to comment on positively that tweaked my interest. Uh, the first is the development, proposed development of a rubric for evaluating and prioritizing capital projects. Um, I think, to me, that's something that residents would really perk up at and be interested in. Some of the feedback we get about projects sometimes is, why this project and not that project? And is this somebody's pet project? And this seems to be just a way of layering in some real transparency so that people can see the math that goes into some of these decisions. So really appreciate that idea. I also just love the language, and I think Councillor McCook picked up on this, um, around the responsible growth policies um, and how this, will help us to better balance the rapid growth with the quality of life, right? Balance keeping our doors open to all the new wonderful people that want to come here, but also paying attention to the people who are already here and some of the anxiety they feel about this rapid growth. And does it mean a possible erosion of some of the quality of life that brought us here, right? Um, so that's like the number one uh, comment and kind of topic that's just below the surface of every interaction that I have with residents. And so I really appreciate this as a way to address that in, in a really kind of concrete, systematic way. So thank you. My question is maybe a bit of a restatement of Councillor Van Newkirk's uh, question. Why is now the right time to do this work? Maybe that's a bit of a, so I hope it's a softball to you. I'm not questioning the value of it so much as, um, I do reflect on, we have lots of master plans and we hear regularly that we're not keeping up with some of our anticipated or, or kind of ideal world pacing of those plans. Um, so why shift resources, limited resources from those things we've already said we wanna do and haven't been able to keep up to yet? Why shift resources to this now? I would say, and I apologize, I realize I keep saying we, most of this is for council's uh, decisions uh, when the time comes, but uh, we, <laughs> the city is at an inflection point, I believe. The growth is not slowing down, it's continuing. And as we watch council go through budget deliberations and the tax impacts that are required on current rate payers to fund future initiatives, it's a real burden. So how can we get ahead of this and help council make decisions looking into the longer term. I really think we're at an inflection point. 
Thank you. It does seem, as I read it, it seems too like this is the next logical step to, I think, Councillor Van Newker's point. You know, we've done a lot of the work to put the master plans in place, and now this kind of collates the major thrust of each and kind of weaves them together in a way that a person can go to that one document and see mm -hmm. timelines for all of the plans. Thank you for articulating a much better answer than I provided. <laughs> I like to answer my own questions. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Appreciate that. Councillor McCoff Swain, you have the floor, Sam. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I think just generally we get a lot of questions around how you're planning for everything. School site, you touched on it. Um, I, I think my message so far has been we've got all these other plans, it's under control, right? And so what I'm really looking forward to this with this is being able to actually point them to it and say, here it actually is, because it's been hard um, to be able to articulate that we've got it under control. I know that you do um, think about how we're planning and growing our community, um, but what I see from this is um, uh, an ability to be able to point them directly to take a look and read at it. And I think that would be my only piece of feedback on it with um, recognize this as a plan for us <laughs> and how we run um, the, the city, but um, a way that residents can understand it as well, right? And the last thing that anyone here wants is to come up and spend a couple of years on this great plan and have it sit on a, on a shelf, right? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, really looking forward to this. Um, quite frankly, you know, I would say we're doing this anyway, just not more formalized. So looking forward to seeing it formalized um, and uh, especially with the fact that we're doing it with inside uh, in-house resources and a lot of the work has already been attributed financially into it, so no real impact into the community. So thanks for that. Thank you, Councillor. Appreciate that. Next on our list to speak is Councillor Parner, followed by Councillor Natalibus. Kathy? You Thank you very much, Mayor. <clears throat> and uh, my only disappointment is that this didn't happen 20 years ago and, you know, we had it done. Uh, 20 years from now is, is a long time, but... When's the best time to start? Like now. the best time to plant a tree. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm really uh, uh, all all for it. I think it makes a whole lot of sense, and I'll, and it's a big, huge piece of work. Um, <clears throat> I don't have to tell you that. Um, Question-wise, I, I did some of the research as well, just to kind of get my head around some of the population increases in our region. And so one of my questions is, um, and I think you alluded to this. What other Municipalities in our region are doing anything like this. Uh, have you have you heard from any? Thank you for the question. Not in our region, but we are following Cochrane very closely. Um, we are heading towards where Cochrane is today, and they've recently completed a growth study, um, redone their offsite levy. So we are a few thousand people behind them, but they have found their. We're trying to get ahead of where Cochrane is in. Today. Um, City of Calgary also has excellent financial sustainability plans. We've looked at various examples. In the region, I can't say specifically, but definitely two municipalities that we watch closely are Cochrane and Airdrie. Okay, good. Uh, and the other question that I had was around the um, hierarchy, the, the chart in here that shows the hierarchy. So where does where does council's budget fit in and where does council fit in with the plan? It, it, if it goes to the point where these are policies and council is constrained, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. So, so where, does, where does that fit in and how do you do that um, back and forth between council's decision making around budget, which is, is key and critical. We don't wanna take that out of the council's hands, uh, but we also wanna guide them in terms of like the good thought and the good work that goes in beforehand. So what are your thoughts around the hierarchy and how that decision making is gonna be made? Thank you for the question. I think the, I believe the hierarchy starts with the MDP. It's a council approved plan, council strategic plan. Those two documents would set the vision hopefully for council's decision making. With respect to the policies, these would be council policies. So if council wishes to adjust the policies, they can do so. How this would fit into the, let's say, annual cycle, all the master plans, we're trying to aggregate them into a comprehensive growth plan. Those actions in the comprehensive growth plan would translate or trickle down into the budget document. Council would approve the budget. If council wishes to make some changes, reprioritize, add, delete, those changes would go back up 
into the comprehensive growth plan. So that council would have a full view of the next 20 years of the impact of that budget decision. Sounds good. So it's, yeah. it's no, cyclical. I, I, that, that sounds like a good plan. I, again, it's going to depend on a lot, of, uh, a lot of players and how that all works out. It also reminds me a lot of the, uh, the Edmonton growth plan in terms of the metropolitan area and, and the work that went into that. You know this as much as I do. It's, it's going to mushroom because one thing leads to another that we don't anticipate. Um, but it, again, it isn't so much the document as it is the process that, that we would go through to get there. So. I really do applaud. It's it's very ambitious, um, and it's going to be great in 20 years. But no, <laughs> hopefully we'll see the impact before the 20 years. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. With that, uh, Councillor Telebus, Nathan, you have the floor. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> thank you uh, very much, Mayor, and thank you for the presentation. A lot of good information there. Um, probably touched on a little bit, but I guess my first question would be. Um, what, what sparked this initiative? At what point did we feel, hey, either we have a gap or we have an issue or we can do better? Um, and what kind of led to this? Thank you for the question. I keep coming back to we're at an inflection point with our population. As we go through the budget process, there is a concern. Um, are we able to ensure that this city is able to meet the needs of future residents. What amenities do we need? What are the state of our facilities? When do we need the next hockey rink? When do we need the next library? How do we start saving today for what we're gonna need in the future? And I apologize, I keep saying we, when does council need to start saving today for what the city is gonna need in the future? Perfect, thank you. Um, obviously running through kind of the hierarchy here and the plan that's in place, it incorporates, as uh, Councillor Munkoff Swain had mentioned, a lot of the programs um, as well as plans that, that probably exist. So what's the biggest difference maker? I, I know we talk about integration and making it all kind of mold together, um, but what does that ultimately look like? Is it one plan that captures all of these or is it just a, a, a higher up plan and you reference the existing plans that are in place? It would capture everything. Right now we have many master plans. In addition to master plans, we have strategies, documents that are guidelines, and many of these have actions. And when we come, when administration brings forward a proposed budget, there's a lot of um, consideration that goes into which items does administration present for funding in this year. So we're doing the, the work already, but the visibility isn't there. So how can we bring everything together so that council can see the impact of all these decisions into the future? Perfect. So I guess just for clarity, will it eliminate some of the existing plans we have so there's not duplication? Um, and it would be its own individual plan that would capture all of that? Or again, would we reference existing plans? Thank you. No, it would not replace existing plans. We will okay. still need to have a transportation master plan, um, a social plan. Those still need to be in place. This will help prioritize all those actions in those master plans and see any linkages between actions in other plans. Perfect. And I guess last question, and this might be a little uh, foresight into the future that we can't answer, but we talk about reduced funding from the provincial government. Do you feel that having a plan like this where we can demonstrate our requirements um, would actively assist us in our ability to get additional funding, uh, depending on each project, but just being able to prove there's a need? Thank you for the question. Yes. Yes, um, we know that the Federation of Canadian Mun Municipalities is looking at developing a new municipal growth framework. We know that the provincial government announced funding for, I can't remember the exact name, but a growth grant for municipalities. We have not seen the details of that grant. How will that grant be allocated? We don't know. But the more that we can prepare and demonstrate the needs that the city has, as well as our infrastructure deficit, I believe the city will be best positioned and we can use this as a differentiator and um, elevate and enrich our advocacy efforts to the province and support FCM in their advocacy as well. Perfect. I feel like you're on your, a roll with your answers here, so I'm trying to come up with another question, but I won't. So, <laughs> I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Thank you. That was a good one. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Seeing the further questions, many members of council, I, most of my questions were essentially asked by somebody on council, or one of your answers maybe took after my question for me. So with that, thank you, Ms. O'Neill, for the presentation. And moving on to our agenda then, is uh, next is uh, 
Item 6, zero, Councillor Inquiries. Any Councillor Inquiries this evening uh, to be made? I'm not aware of any, but some may have popped up since we began our meetings this evening. Seeing none. All right, our next uh, item is our closed session, 7.1, Offsite Levy Council Education Session. Uh, I believe we will have a motion to move in camera, and then we'll take a just a member council willing to move the motion before us to move in camera. Councillor Barnhart, I'll ask you to make that motion, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, pleased to say that uh, Council move into closed session at 722, pursuant to the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, sections 24 and 25. Perfect. Thanks. Give me one second here. Discussion on the motion from members of Council? Seeing none, Council, would you please begin the voting process, please? And that carries unanimously, 7-0 to move in camera. We'll take a short two-minute break and we'll come back in closed session with our first item at, on 7.1.